Hello YouTube world. So this is a video that I decided I'd put together because there wasn't one whenever I bought my first camper. So what you're looking at here is a 1993 Lance model 900 11 foot 3 inch extended cab. Um, I bought it from a guy in Amarillo about a year and some change ago. I've gone through it 100%. Everything works uh, to one extent or another. Um, sometime in this thing's life, uh, the guy was really into ham radio or something, CB radios, and he put a whole bunch of antennas on top. One of the first things I did when I got this thing, I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It doesn't rain a lot. We will get snow every now and then, but it's gone pretty quick here in the city. Um, so one of the first things I did is I got up on top, scraped off all the old uh, sealant and put new sealant on. Um, if you're an RV newbie, the thing you want to buy is a self-leveling, self, excuse me if I can speak, self-leveling lap sealant. And that stuff is strictly for the top of your camper. Um, this lance had a selling point that the entire roof is one big sheet of aluminum with just holes cut out and drills, uh, drill holes for mounting things. And so it's a full walk-on roof. You can actually get up there and walk everywhere on it and not worry about putting your foot through it. Um, so I did that with the sealant everywhere on top. The other thing I had to do is this thing had been in a hailstorm at one point in its life and the air conditioner cover was completely uh, full of holes. It looked like it had been in a meteor storm. But yeah, it was crushed pretty bad and uh, that was uh, pretty fun trying to track that down. But I was able to find it. If you call the Lance people there in California, they're actually really good about telling you uh, what part you can use and uh, what part you can't use. And the other good news is if you're new to the RV world is a lot of these parts are still used on RV today, like the interior lights, um, the exterior lights. Uh, just keep in mind that now the majority of RV lights are LEDs. Um, that's one of the things I've done to this also. So just looking here on this side, you're looking, uh, of course, the front end. Um, more modern uh, truck campers will not have a window on the front. Uh, mine's cracked. If you can kind of see, mine's cracked. And uh, I don't really worry about it that much because I'm in New Mexico. Like I said, it doesn't rain that much. Uh, I don't have to really worry about it. Um, uh, but I have replaced most of the lights on this with LEDs. All new marker lights up on top. Those are all new LEDs. Um, also the patio lights here on the side, you will see. I've uh, upgraded. This was a regular light bulb and now it's an LED. It's so much brighter and so much better. Um, the sealant you need to use on the outside penetrations of this shell uh, is a whole different type of RV sealant. And if you go to any camper world or any RV supply, they'll tell you the right stuff to buy. I was really lucky on this camper that I had electric jacks. I wish it was the kind with a remote control so I could just sit in the back with a leveling uh, gizmo give me an idea how to level it out, but I'm actually pretty lucky to have found one that had electric jacks and they all work. Um, this first uh, thing on your camper is the water heater. When you open it up, of course, you've got all the guts. This is uh, actually winter right now as I film this, so this has been winterized. This right here is the anode rod. What this is for, it's sacrificial. This part on top is sacrificial. It's meant to uh, corrode instead of the inside of your tank of your water heater and your it goes in right there you know, it screws in mine has a little electrical deal that goes on there uh, I don't know exactly what that's for it creates electrical charge and, and uh, I don't know somehow attracts the corrosiveness this right here is where the gas comes in this is the gas valve and then the gas goes in here mine is a direct spark ignition or DSI as you may uh, hear it called I think that's what it's called and so when I turn on my water heater, it click, 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 and then boom, you'll hear it take off like a jet engine. Now, you'll see on the door here, there's a little observation uh, window here. So if you've got this closed, you can actually see the flame going on. Um, it has to be dark outside though, I've noticed. At least that's mine. This right here is a pressure release valve, so it doesn't explode inside of your, inside of your uh, camper, if ever. <laughs> you have a hard time with that. And this right here is the exhaust uh, for the hot 
hot heat as it comes out, as it burns, uh, that's the exhaust. So that's it for our water heater. This right here is where you will hook in for your water. You open this here for your fresh water. And this is your second opening here on the, uh, on the outside of the camper, of course. And this right here is your hook in for your city water. Always use a pressure reducer. Water, city water pressure that comes out of your garden hose is too much. And on old campers like this, you will blow a hose or split a hose and it's just bad news. I mean, this thing's 27 years old at the time I filmed this. All right, the next opening here is your battery box. One battery. Modern campers will have two or more batteries. Now, you may be able to see here in the window, I've got a solar panel, faces south. And I'm able to hook that into my battery and it keeps it topped off while I'm gone. Um, I'm here on Kirtland Air Force Base and I've, and this is where I pay to store it uh, here in Albuquerque. And right now I've got it uh, connected right now. This is the on off right here. This is my battery disconnect. But something I didn't know whenever I first got this camper is right back in there. You can see it right there. That is a little circuit breaker too. And I did not know this. I thought I'd bought a lemon and I couldn't get the power to go. Well, there's a little tab on the side right next to that rivet where I'm pointing right now. And once you push that in, boom, I had power. That was a very happy day. And something weird about this one is that the negative is the white and the positive is the black in this camper. Go figure. What's up with that? The next opening here, this is going to be your shore power cable. And also I keep in here my little adapter so I can plug it into the wall at home if I want to. But when you do that, your extension cord gets kind of hot when you're running the air conditioner. So it's all coiled up in there. This is a 30 amp camper. And so that's what this plug looks like. If you've got a plug like this, it's a 30 amp. If it has four prongs, then it's much higher. I believe that's a 50 amp when it's higher. And you only really need 50 amp if you've got more than one air conditioner going, like in one of those big travel trailers. This right here is the exhaust for the, and the intake uh, for the combustion chamber of your furnace. And what it does is it sucks the fresh air in here to burn for propane only. Once you're in, on the inside of the camper, there's a whole different intake and, ex, and in and out uh, that you deal with. But this is for your burnt propane and this is your actual exhaust pipe and that thing gets really hot. You do not want to touch that. But you don't have to worry about insulation around here because it's like a box that goes in here and it surrounds this exhaust pipe. And so it's sucking in cool air and putting out hot air. So that's a pretty neat little thing. This next opening here on my 1993 Lance 900 is the outdoor shower. I've never used it, but it works and it doesn't leak. So that's the good news. So this uh, camper, it's in a constant state of upgrade because it's so old. I've taken the uh, trim vinyl strip out of this. So I had the wrong size. I uh, just did the, the trim on the outside. That's one inch and this needs to be three quarter. I need to buy some three quarter. This opening here, we're right underneath the toilet, basically. We're on the very end of the camper, and this is where the toilet and the and the, and the uh, shower is, the wet bath. And you open this up, we call this the basement, and in here are basically just your valves to turn this on. That is the hose that goes up to the toilet, and that one's actually was leaking whenever I was on city water because it was too much pressure. And then that black right there, that's the poo hole. That's where your poo poo goes into the black tank. This next one over here, that's the drain for the shower. That goes into the gray tank. And then of course you've got your drains here that go into the gray tank, all right? And these are your shutoff valves for, for your, your uh, the, uh, I'm, I take it back. Those are your drains. So that drains all the water out of your bathroom in the winter time like we're doing right now. And speaking of tanks, let's go ahead and look underneath here. Look at under here, this first tank is your gray water tank. And then the gross tank is the black water tank. And that's back here. Now your tanks, you got one dump out there. This is your black water tank. And this is your gray water tank. Make sure you get a good hose. You take this off. Be careful that these valves are no good like mine was. When you take this off, that nasty poo water tries to come out and get you. It's gross. So what I do is I make sure these are all the way up because sometimes they come down if you're not, if they're a little old. Take this off, make sure you're wearing gloves because that is nasty. Pop that off, you put your sewer hose on, dump your poo-poo water, then dump your gray water to flush that poo-poo down the, down the, uh, 
the sewer hose that you've got. Then close it back up. What I like to do is get the hose there at the dump station at a KOA or whatever, and then flush a little water down the toilet and try to break up anything that else might be in there and try and flush the rest of it out and then close it up. You're good to go. That's your tanks. Um, on this camper, right back here, excuse my chairs right here, but my back here is where I keep my hose. Right in there, there's a tray that slides out and there's my sewer hose. Gross. Not the most ele elegant job. That's that. Something else I've done, once again, I've upgraded the tail lights. We've got electric jacks on the back. Of course, these switches are kind of weird. I need to get my Sharpie out and it's been bleached out, but it's up to bring the foot up and down to put the foot down. For some reason on this, in the back, this one controls the one on the other side and this one controls the one, this one. It's weird. It's not that way on the front. On the front, it's the side you're on. It's really weird. Once again, I upgraded the LEDs there. Uh, these are the same tail lights they're brand new from amazon that you see on some track trailers and um i tried putting led lights in there and uh, they didn't really want to work out i don't know why so something to look into um the door on my camper actually was kind of bent so i kind of did a little jerry rig type thing in which i put new screws in and that helped out but what really helped out since it was sagging is I got one of these little L brackets and I screwed it right in there. And boy, that made a world of difference. It actually worked out. And the guy before me, he put a regular old deadbolt in there and that works too. I've replaced that. These things are notorious for breaking. I don't ever let this thing, like I don't ever, like I pull it to, come on now. So I pull it like that. I don't ever push it to snap into place. I actually will push on that and so it'll go in because those snap off really easy as they get old. Um, right back here, the rear window has like a fisheye lens on it. I don't know why it's brown like that. I think it's just old and the sun's just been cooking the glue and made it brown. So that's it. That's on there. Something else I added here is I put a little handle there because it's kind of squirrely. This, it doesn't look like it in the video, but that is pretty narrow and it's hard to hit when you're getting in and out. It's really the video is not giving it justice, but... It's kind of hard to get in and out of this thing, especially when it's dark outside. Um, right here is a handle. They still use this handle on a lot of campers, and that's a light right there. You push up and down. Mine had a red one in there whenever I bought it, so that was pretty neat. I guess he left it on when he was driving around. Um, who knows? Interesting. Uh, these handles are pretty cool because you just lift up, and then it'll turn, and it'll lock in place. So when you're driving down the road, and then lift up. And boom, it's out like that. So just give you a little stability getting in and out. Uh, we're going to continue on the outside before we go in. Once again, brand new tail light, LED lights. Oh, what a beautiful New Mexico sunset. Um, I also lucked out on mine. Mine has a generator. And this one is a propane generator. It's a uh, 2.5. Uh, the paperwork says it'll get up to 2.7, 2.8 uh, kilowatts is what they're talking about. And that's just enough to run uh, the power, uh, the wall outlets inside. So you can plug a regular uh, thing that takes a wall plug. And um, also it will run the generator or the microwave, but not both at the same time. It will pop your breaker if you do that. Um, it runs off propane. It's pretty good. It's got about 360 hours on it. It's ready for a tune-up. And this is the one thing that costs, that's the most expensive thing on your whole camper. It's more expensive than your air conditioner, everything else, uh, all things being equal, I could probably sell that generator by itself for about 1200 bucks. And I don't wanna do that because I use it all the time. Um, this little bracket right here is for the awning. It does have an awning, it's manual. You, there's a crank inside, I'm not gonna open it because this charger from the 70s has been here since like 1995 according to the sticker i can't even read the sticker on it but anyways um, i'm afraid that it would fall down and hit this nice man's car that's probably worth a billion dollars who knows once again lcd or LC led lights um coming forward this right here are your tanks they're two seven gallon tanks um i had to get an adapter here 
because these are the old POL connectors and these are your new barbecue grill connectors. I can't remember exactly what it's called. I had this on because I was working with the generator earlier today. I'm messing around inside, but um, yeah, these things are kind of a pain in the butt to get filled. I had to get them recertified because um, they were old. Nobody would fill them. They couldn't legally. So I had to take them down to the local propane place. They just did a quick test on them. And they said, yep, they slapped a sticker on there and they're good to go. So that's the thing. And this is supposed to be an automatic flip over uh, switch. Uh, when one runs out, it's supposed to automatically flip to the other one. I don't think it works because it ran out in the middle of the night and I had to come out and flip it. And then the generator fired right back up. I got to have the generator on all the time because I have a breathing machine at night and I need to plug into the wall. Oh, too much information. This entrance, or this entry right here, is your back of your refrigerator. And this refrigerator is a three-way refrigerator. I'll more on that later. It's pretty interesting how it works when it's on battery power uh, DC, is that it uh, heats up an element that uh, does something where it boils ammonia, and the ammonia reacts with some other chemical that's in there, and that uh, somehow makes it cold. I don't know. Science technologies close you bitch. Open. I don't know why. Give me a hard time. I'll figure you out later. All right. Anyways, <laughs> so one of the main things you got to worry about with these type of old truck campers is this sliding window. If you're in a place that's not very secure, homeless folks will break that open and climb in. It's so easy for them just to break that little lever get in there and then they have a nice warm place to sleep and if you've left your battery hooked up and your and your gas on they've got a furnace too so just keep that in mind um it took me a long time to figure out what this thing was everyone seems to agree that it's like a holding thing for a weather station now, of course everybody has to give smart ass comments oh it's a beer holder oh, i don't know it holds your dildo it's like man shut up that's not what that's for uh, it's supposed to be a weather station holder. Why it's there, I don't know. You would think it'd be somewhere that would catch some wind. I don't know, maybe some temperature. It's weird, who knows. So that's the outside of this camper. That plastic deal right there is the uh, top of the, uh, the, uh, the exhaust for the uh, refrigerator. And that thing right there looks like a vent for a dryer but there's not a dryer in there so that's weird and another antenna who knows all right let's go inside oh these are pass-through doors underneath so you can uh, open up and you know get stuff that when it's in your uh, truck your, your truck bed you can open those up and your 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 tire hump would be like right here so you can open those up and store things inside your truck bed there's two on the other side too just God, just listen to me from my experience. Make sure that you take the cinder blocks out <laughs> before you try to take this thing out. Otherwise, you're going to mess something up. I don't know. This is, this is a kind of a pain in the butt whenever this bump out, whenever you're backing in, because it's like just enough room. All right, going inside. Um, oh, this right here, this is a uh, tow bar. This goes forward and hooks into your uh, hitch on your truck. So then you can tow something. Uh, I think it's funny because it looks like a dog wiener hanging out the bottom of this thing. But anyways, um, yeah, that hooks onto your the ball of your bumper or your hitch so you can actually tow something. Um, you're allowed a 300 pound tongue weight and 5,000 pounds of uh, total trailer weight and it's supposed to handle it. But who knows? I've never tried. And, and honestly, I'd be kind of scared. I'd have to redo the trailer plug on it too. All right, so this is something that took me a while to figure out. So in this truck camper, once again, Lance model 19, 900, um, you leave that light switched on, that black switch right there. You leave that switched on all the, all the time because this light right here, boom, that's what turns it on from in here. If you don't have that switched up there, it won't work. Uh, these are your patio light switches right here. And I'll go ahead and turn those on. And I'm just on battery right now. And man, those things, can't tell right now because it's kind of bright outside still. Those things are like the sun at night. Um, the main reason I went to LED on everything is because it saves your battery a lot longer. Uh, an incandescent bulb, your normal light bulb, will burn through your battery pretty quick. Little upgrade I did. I took the nasty carpet out. It was that 
pink purplish carpet can't really tell in this it looks kind of tan in this video but i put in hardwood floors and man it looks so much nicer and it doesn't smell as bad in here all right let me go ahead and flip on all the lights and then we'll continue this tour so this is the light that's in the main area and this is our kitchen all right so let's just go ahead and start right here so let me get out right here as soon as you look in the door you've got fire extinguisher i really wonder if it would work or not i've got another fire extinguisher i wouldn't rely on this one alone it's probably the original um let's look at the tag let's just get a laugh and see what's going on here uh, oh no we're burning to death all right can we even read it let's see can we even read it can't even read it <laughs> all right we're all gonna die in our sleep all right so uh this is the dinette and the dinette has lots of storage underneath under here is where i put my tie downs and uh, i got a power cord in there i've also got a wrench and a flashlight that's uh comes in pretty handy there um that's about all i use for that one all right so stepping in this right here this pulls out for when you want to make the bed so the dinette actually converts this table comes off and that post comes out and there's more storage in that little floor section right there and that's one of those pull out doors right there that's one of those pull out doors right there that you can get into the back um this bed the cushions come off and you can transform this thing into either a one person bed or you can slide these out and make a two person bed it's kind of a pain in the butt though because when you've got it in the two person bed mode um you can't really get into the bathroom so, so you got to keep that in mind if you want to have you know four potentially five people in here sleeping then it's going to be really tight uh we've done it with three people three grown adults and it was pretty tight um oh this last switch right here you got master switch and jacks this needs to be up to work your jacks that's down for everything else always leave that down whenever you park it even if you have your battery disconnected it makes it just a little bit harder for them to try and steal your truck camper so that's that uh window window of course we, we're still in the dinette looking up this thing right here let me get to a better angle this up here this is mostly for storage but it's also um this top part there's like levers up latches up here and undo you undo these latches and the thing comes down and let me open this up um you've got cushions here that'll come out and you can put a kid up to 100 pounds up in here so that's why i say potentially five people in here um how they get up there god i don't know i'd imagine you put your toddlers up there and just pray they don't fall out <laughs> so that's that um this is the thermostat okay we were talking about the furnace outside with the intake and outtake so here's the furnace itself right here it actually brings in fresh air from in here runs it over a heat exchanger and then puts it that heated air out so you don't ever have any combusted air in here at least you're not supposed to and so you don't have to worry about dying in your sleep from carbon monoxide because you should also have a carbon monoxide detector so that's how we're at there let me turn this off lots of lights have lots of lights go to costco get yourself a whole bunch of the el cheapo flashlights i'll tell you about here in a minute i just upgraded the um, power converter the old power converter was toast all right moving back here we have just a little area you can put your spices or whatever you want in here i've just got junk in here right now we'll figure that out come this summer um like i said the guy was all in the ham radio you had those gauges there for what i do not know maybe somebody can help me out figure it out uh going back to the thermostat let me not go too far um i couldn't figure out how to make it work and no matter what i did with it it wouldn't turn on so there's a little switch under here that you just click over that way and here in a second you'll hear it click on uh it takes a minute um oh i've got gas turned off it won't turn on never mind <laughs> uh moving on so this is supposed to be a wardrobe of some sort i just use it for storage so here's all my old food uh 
it's winter now so it's just all the stuff that i didn't want to take in the house and it's in a sealed plastic box um i haven't seen a rodent around here other than rabbits so i'm really not worried about them getting in here this is all junk and parts um, from doing everything this is one of the few lights up here that i have not converted to led because i couldn't find the correct bulb i thought about the right bulb no dice and this right here is supposed to be more wardrobe you see there's little hanger deals up at the top and just more storage my pop-up pit and a couple of chairs all right this is the refrigerator it's a freezer on the bottom i'm sorry freezer on top refrigerator on the bottom and it's a three-way and so when i say three-way you've got your choice of running either ac dc gas or auto auto will pick whatever is available it'll pick ac if you're plugged into shore power it'll pick ac if you're on generator and it will pick gas if you're not hooked on battery well it has to have battery uh, dc will work straight off battery and gas will just use a little bit of battery and it uses the gas to heat that chamber up and you've got to check it's sort of an error uh, button and then you've got how cold you want to make it and on off that works pretty good levelers we'll get into levelers maybe on a different video but this is just a tour of what we got that's my other level for left and right that's my level for front and back uh queen size bed so the queen size bed uh the only thing i did to it is put a three inch memory foam topper on it well i made all the difference in the world it's pretty good escape hatch up on top um and then we got windows to the sides and the window in the very front doesn't open um, something I did is I put a swinging arm and a old cheapo TV with a Roku. That's all I did to it. And it comes in pretty handy. So, it's actually, and so I can swivel it around when I want to sit over here at the dinette. Watch my TV. Because that's what nature's all about, right? Sitting inside your camper with full electricity. Up there at the top, I don't know if you can really see, but there's a uh, stereo and a clock. That crank right there is for the antenna if you want broadcast. Uh, and the way that works is that that actually goes to a coaxial cable. It comes out right down there. It works sometimes. Uh, this is just more storage. Uh, originally, there was like a, a little old school TV. Uh, uh, old tube TV that would swivel back and forth and you can just open that door and see what you had that would be pretty cool if I could find one that'd be pretty neat of course it's not gonna be HD or anything all right so still working our way around here is the front looking out the front pass-through window and we've got our cap or doors here what's important to know is inside here is the on-demand water filter a bit of light in there so this is the on-demand, not water filter, water pump. And that's the back of the water heater. That's the on-demand water pump. If you're not hooked into city water, uh, this basically keeps the, all the plumbing pressurized. And as soon as it senses that um, you're using water, you'll hear it click on and uh, wake everybody up in the camp. No, I'm just kidding. It's a little bit uh, loud, but you get used to it. Um, that's a little uh, just strainer that pulls water out of the freshwater tank. And the freshwater tank is underneath this step right here, right in the center of the camper. There's supposed to be a propane um, sensor there. I need to wire it back up. Came out. And that is your power converter. That's where your main uh, breakers are inside this camper. Turn this like that. And let's get it open. <laughs> just upgraded it so we got a new fuse box and these are your main breakers this is your main these are wall outlets and this is uh, uh, this is your outlets this is your air conditioner and this is your microwave so that's what that is pretty cool huh and it's not a old magnetech anymore so now we're doing much better and this is a vent here the reason why I had to change it out is because it was squealing in the middle of the night. They don't make a replacement fan, so I had to do that. There's another one of your pass-throughs. Here's your other pass-through over here. I'm using this cooler as a garbage can right now. But anyways, um, so here's the sink, and it's a double sink. And this is for a water filter. And the water filter, actually, I need to get a new element for it. It's right there. It comes in handy. 
once again we've got bypass hoses everything else and that's the back of the battery box right there in that white back there well, pretty handy um, one of your wall outlets is here underneath this cabinet the other wall outlet is underneath that right over there um, I've got that solar here in this window facing south to keep that charge. That's just another solar there. Um, up here, that's where I keep all my dishes. Pretty good. And like I said, just about everything in here has been upgraded to LED, including these lights. Um, I don't know if you can really tell with this video, but these are like, it's like a strip of LED lights that you can buy the connectors also and you can cut it to length and it works out pretty good and it just sips that voltage so it works really good once again the microwave works pretty good here is a three burner stove the three burner stove works pretty good and that's what i use this coffee maker for that coffee maker you fill it like you would a normal coffee maker and then you set it on the burner and it boils the water and then on oven never been used just used well not by me anyways and it's a spark type you have to do that to get it going and then over here like we said the furnace another one of those pass throughs underneath Some more drawers pantry for food you can see in there i don't know what this guy was doing that's a wire for something i wonder because there's wires underneath this storage too under the dinette makes me wonder yeah i think he had a battery under there too um now let's go into the throne room there's a mirror oh there wasn't i thought there was it's a mirror on the outside let's get this trick oh. old camper come on all right so it's red in there because that's antifreeze it's been uh, winterized so no i did not pee blood uh that's later uh, but this is a wet bath that's what they call it so there is a shower curtain there meant to cover this door um it doesn't look like it but there's plenty of room to shower in there it's just fine there's a vent up there with a fan um you turn it on by turning the water on there and then pulling that thing up and it works pretty good and then underneath here is just more storage so and the neat thing here is that the heater puts a heater vent out right there and there's the drain for that um yeah it's amazing what they can squeeze into one of these uh truck beds but yeah it's i'm pretty amazed with it and it does pretty good for me and my son and you know girlfriend her brother every now and then and we have a good time um hope i answered everything oh so the generator this is the uh, hours for the generator this right here is the neat thing that's your tells you how much battery you have when i do that it actually made that kind of dim down a little bit but anyways, so it's uh tells me how much battery i have and it also tells you the status of your tanks you've got your holding to your black tank your gray tank and then of course fresh water but that's pretty neat right there and this right here is you turn that on when you want your when you want your water pump on this is your water heater you turn that on and it'll automatically fire up and i'll keep getting hot until it gets to the temperature it's supposed to be there's a, a little dial on the back of the water heater you can tell it that's the generator on off and that generator on off that's a it's kind of tricky with a generator this old but it does work it's just a trick to it hood light hood fan it works for me and i hope i answered some questions for you oh we didn't talk about the air conditioner so the air conditioner i lucked out with this one uh fire alarm uh i lucked out with this one this air conditioner let me get the flashlight because it's still dark in here uh where'd it go there it is so i lucked out with this air conditioner let me flip this around let's let me flip it around anyways so this air conditioner i looked out that it had the heat um, option to it it blows ice cold but it is loud um 
but it also has the heater. So if you're on shore power, you don't have to burn gas. It'll actually do heat. It was an option on this Penguin air conditioner, but it works great. So, and of course we've got some water damage. I mean, come on, it's 27 years old. So what are you gonna do? But um, I think I've stopped all that. That's the good news. You can't put it back, but at least you can stop it. Anyways, uh, that's my camper. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to answer them for you. Never mind that. That's just a gun and a badge. Uh, cool. Have a good night.